Hey there, my name is Chris. I make films about backpacking, and this is the gear that I used on my recent trip to the Colorado desert. Before diving in, I should probably talk about the conditions we encountered. Uh, it was dry, it was a desert, no surprise there. There was a wide temperature range, uh, 70 to 25 degrees Fahrenheit, and very, very challenging terrain, off-trail bushwhacking, cliffside scrambling, stuff like that. So I've broken up my gear into categories, and I'm going to go through it one at a time because I am cool like that. <laughs> I will start with my sleep system and shelter. I consider my down layers part of my sleep system because I wear them while sleeping. How about that? Here's my favorite down parka. It's a custom piece made by Goose Feet Gear. Eight and a half ounces, four and a half ounces of downfill. Amazing warmth to weight ratio. If you haven't heard of Goose Feet Gear yet, you should definitely check them out. They make really great custom gear for the same price that you'd pay for an off-the-shelf product. Next, we've got my Bora Gear down pants. A five ounce luxury item, I admit. Uh, my tushy gets cold, so this thing keeps my tushy warm. Awkward. Okay, here's my sleeping pad, my tent, and my sleeping bag. My sleeping pad is the Neo Air X Lite. It's 12 ounces, not the warmest thing in the world, but it, you know, it's, it's cozy, it works. Uh, my tent is the Z-Pax Hex Mid Solo, 15.4 ounces. I love it, it's amazing, very trustworthy tent. And my sleeping bag is the Z-Pax 10 degree bag. It's 23 ounces and it's very nice and cozy and warm. Next category, packing stuff. My backpack is the Z-Pax Arcall backpack, 24 ounces. And what I love about this thing is that it's really forgiving. So on the trips when I'm carrying a lot of heavy camera gear, it's still comfortable. Next, first aid lighting and communication. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on the first aid part. There's a lot of little things in there and that would take forever. So maybe in the future, I'll, I'll create a separate video on that. For lighting, I like the Black Diamond Spot, three ounces. Uh, for cordage, I love the Lawson Outdoor Gear Iron Wire. It's really strong and light, and I like the Lawson Outdoor Gear plastic files because they're one of the only things I've found that don't seem to leak on me at elevation. And for communication, I like the Global Star Sat Phone. I would normally not bother with this, but when you've got kids, it's really nice to be able to call home and check on them and make sure that they're okay. Next category, cooking and water. I used to be a huge jet boil fan, but I recently switched to the Soto Windmaster stove and I'm never going back. It's smaller, it's lighter, it's just better. And I went to that based on recommendation from Stick from sticksblog.com. Definitely recommend you check out his blog. He's a wealth of information and a really friendly guy too. Uh, for a spoon, I like the Sea to Summit TI spoon and for food storage, I used the Ursac Bear Bag. Moving on to my water stuff, I used a pair of smart water bottles, and for filtration, I used an Evernew 2 liter bladder attached to a Sawyer Mini, and that was great because it gave me an additional 2 liters of storage. Uh, for coffee and scotch, I like to have a small Nalgene on hand, and please note that cute little sticker on there from a company called 40 Below. 40 Below doesn't actually make Nalgene's, but they make a lot of really good winter stuff. They're a really tiny shop run by a guy named Joel out of Washington, really friendly, just good company. Okay, here's a pretty big category for me, camera stuff. My main camera was the Sony a7R2. It's a full-frame mirrorless camera. It's amazing. And uh, my two main lenses were the 28mm f2 and a 16-35mm f4 for those wide shots. Looking back, I really miss having my 24-70 lens just because I miss that focal length and plus I miss the, the depth of field that you can get when you're zoomed into 70. My secondary camera was the GoPro Hero 5 on an Evo gimbal for stability and that's how I was able to get those wide stable shots. For a tripod, I used the Pedco Ultrapod Grip, and when I needed a taller tripod, I used the Trail Picks. That little triangular thing in the center attaches to your trekking poles and creates a semi-usable tall tripod. On the right, the Flomo Panner uh, is what I used to create those wide panning shots. You put your GoPro on top and let it go, and that's what you get. One of the more interesting things I brought with me on this trip was this crazy slidey car thing. It's called a King Joy Dolly, it's nine ounces. You screw that to your camera and you get these cool sliding shots. Uh, however, it does require a flat surface to operate and nature does not offer such surfaces. So I had to buy this little piece of plastic, cut it to shape, and then use that on top of a uh, sleeping pad to create enough uh, slidable surface for it to operate. For Dialog Audio, I used the Rode Video Mic Pro, and despite that big fuzzy thing over the top of it, it did not handle wind noise well at all. It required a lot of cleanup and post just to make the audio usable. And I actually didn't really like the, the frequency response of it very much, so I'm, I'm looking for a better alternative. For camera maintenance, I used a blower squeeze ball thing and a lens pen. 
For a monopod, I attached a little screw to the end of my trekking pole, and then on occasion, I attached a gimbal to the top of that, so I was able to get these cool aerial shots that way. For power, I just brought a lot of batteries. A lot of batteries. Three pounds of batteries, batteries galore, batteries, batteries, batteries. One of my favorite items on this trip was my Z-Pax Multipack. It's 2.9 ounces. It's awesome. It fits my camera perfectly. I have a three-pound camera when you when you count the lens. I mean, that's that's no joke to carry around, and I was kind of worried about how I was going to do that. But with the Z-Pax Multipack, it was great. It fit inside there perfect. It was protected, and it was always ready. To store my lenses, I made these little protective cover things out of Reflectix that worked out pretty well. Last but not least, clothing stuff. I'll start with my shell layers. On the left here is the Arterix Norvan SL rain jacket, 4.4 ounces. I get asked about that a lot. Yes, it does work. It is lightweight. It never wets out on me. It's very breathable. Love it. That said, I've never actually had it in really serious weather yet, but we'll see. Uh, my rain pants were the Montbell Versalite rain pants, 3.65 ounces. And for my wind shell, I used the Montbell Tachyon uh, 1.7 ounces great wind jacket. Okay, moving on. For a buff, I use the Outdoor Research Uber Tube. It's 0.8 ounces. It is actually lighter than a buff, so I like that. For a hat, I use the Outdoor Research Sunwonder Hat, 2.9 ounces. For active insulation, I like the Patagonia R1 Hoodie, 12.7 ounces. And for base layer bottoms, I like the Mech T3 bottoms. They're only 6 ounces. Yay! For a shirt, I like Smart Wool. And for socks, I really like the Defeat Wooly Bully socks paired with the Fox River sock liners. I find those two together tend to resist odor the best. And trust me, after a few days, you don't you don't want to smell my feet. Last items on the list, my Brooks Cascadia Trail Runners are only 11 ounces. And for gaiters, I use the Dirty Girl Gaiters, 1.5 ounces. Those work great at keeping stuff out of my shoes. So that was a really quick rundown of all my gear. I hope it was helpful. If you haven't seen the film Alcove yet, please check it out. It's at backpackinglight.com. It's free, so why the heck not?